Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we're gonna be scraping UK based real estate properties from onthemarket.com and we'll be using Python Scrapey framework in order to actually achieve our goal. Also, I've created this experimental Python development environment for you guys being able to follow this tutorial completely in browser, so no need to install either Python or Scrapey on your local system. But of course, if you have them already installed, that's pretty fine. You can just open up your uh, kind of text editor or ID or wherever you're used to write the code and you just follow this tutorial as well. So uh, here we will be extracting the uh, title, address, description, the price, the image URL, well, and probably we can also make use of this phone number as well. So if you're excited, let's actually start writing some code. So first we need to import Scrapey itself. So I simply say import Scrapey and then from crawler process, uh, from, I'm sorry, from Scrapey uh, dot crawler import crawler process, which is needed uh, to actually run our spiders. And before actually defining the spider class itself, uh, I want to say, here like run spider and create the process uh, instance so process equals crawler process and then process dot crawl and here we need to pa pass the class name we're supposed to crawl we didn't yet create this so let's actually create one so I say class uh, on the market uh, which would be uh, inherited from Scrapey Spider, which is a general purpose spider. And well, let's specify name for now, and it's just enough at the moment. So I just say on the market like this. Okay, so here I'm using the name, the class name itself, like this. And finally, I need to say process.start just in order to actually start crawling this kind of spider. So uh, the next thing to consider here is actually to define the crawling logic. So um, as far as we, uh, we have in pagination over here, that means that uh, at some point we will need uh, to crawl all the pages. And also uh, as far as uh, if, if, you do, if you don't specify the uh, user agent, well in that case you'll get uh, 100 uh, and, uh, a 403 uh, HTTP error which which means like you're not allowed to actually scrape in this so we'll definitely need to provide user agent as well so let me just quickly invoke my developer tools here and go into the network tab and I just update this stuff one more time okay so mm, let's have a look uh, at the user agent we have here so i'll be using my browser as as the user agent so where is that request headers uh okay so this one kind of user agent and well basically basically that's it so we will need to make uh, custom requests uh, uh you know in order to be able to provide user agent itself basically of course we could have we could could have done this uh, here in the crawler process but you know like the more uh, right way of doing things is actually to make a custom request so the hitters and if needed proxies as well could have been uh, actually handled there so let's uh, define the method that is called start requests which is uh, a scrape the default method method he's uh, he's looking for uh, you're in invoking the spider actually so it would take the only self argument and that's kind of it so uh here let's first create the single url uh later on we'll be crawling all the pages but first let's just create the single url here so just copy this stuff and paste and here i can simply say yield and scrapey dot request and now url equals url and also hitters equals self dot hitters will create this uh, hitters uh, element just in a moment so hold on a sec 
hitters and also we need to specify the callback function so bear in mind the scrapy requests are, are made asynchronously so we need to create some sort of a callback function like in javascript promises it's kind of the same stuff here so callback equals and we'll use self.parse okay so now let's define our hitters uh, so i say hitters equals and here I'll simply grab my user agent and that's kind of enough for this sort of side at least so I can simply say uh, so user agent define here and the user agent is so okay so now it's time to actually define the parse method that would be called uh, when the request uh, has been kind of completed so I can say dev parse and it would take two arguments the self instance as usual in Python and the response object the entire response object here so let me just quickly see that if that works so I would like to say self dot log of course uh, you all you also could just to use the print but in scrape it's really handy to use self dot log especially if you're logging your data to the file, this would automatically add the output of the scraper, some debugging information just directly to the file where you're logging. So just bearing that in mind as well. That's why I'm using self.log. And here we want to log actually the response. Uh, well, let's basically, log, uh, no, let's uh, status. Uh, I want to see the status code. So just to make sure that that is a uh, status of 200. So I can simply say, like uh, status and plus and probably I need to stringify just to make sure everything works so this is kind of it okay now I hold my breath and actually run this run this uh, spider here so let's see what we got okay so let me just see okay so okay here we have yes our state is 200 so let's just sorry uh, let's just add a little bit of uh, a space here just to make it clear okay so here we have status 200 which means that the response uh, has been received correctly so everything is kind of okay but uh, when you're uh, debugging your spiders, it's not really a good way uh, of doing things when you're torturing the server every time uh, you're trying to debug a, sin a single selector. So the right way of doing things is actually to uh, kind of store the response to some, some, some sort of a file and then just uh, loading that file in order to debug, uh, in order to debug, uh, sorry my mouse is going crazy for some reason, okay. So in order to debug uh, your selectors, and that's exactly uh, the way that we're supposed to go right in here. So here I, here I can simply say with open, uh, I call this response.html, and we want to open the file stream to write bytes as HTML file here. And here I can simply say uh, HTML file dot write and response dot text okay and I just run this one more time and just to make sure that this response dot HTML has been stored uh, correctly I just duplicate my epico environment here and quickly say from hack import all so the hack is the lib library that is forwarding the basic Linux command to Python environment so here I can simply say ls and here see this response.html file is available and if you just want to have a look at what is there so we can simply cat response.html and we see that the output here is actually our document our HTML document so uh, just bearing that in mind and now in order to actually start parsing this re response we need uh, to uh, add a couple more things so i mean like if you're if you're dealing with a real response well in that case uh, you can say just like response.css and then you say css selectors but if we will be right if we would be actually 
uh, uploading the stuff from the file in that case that won't kind of work so let's go to the scrapey documentation so i say simply scrapey docs uh, like this uh, and we'll go to the selectors part okay so here we're looking for the selectors obviously i don't remember that kind of code by heart so we just need to have a look here okay selectors okay response selector okay so this regards the response object okay and here is the code snippet that we actually need so in order to work with the selectors directly in case when we would be actually parsing some somewhat a string which we would obtain from uploading the file uh, uploading the html document from the file in this case we'll need this sort of code so i just quickly grab this from here saying copy and now let's get back to our environment so uh, at the moment we don't need to create the crawler process none of this stuff and here uh, we can actually simply say that we want our on the market right so just copy and here i can simply say on the market dot parse and basically this is kind of it so now instead of writing the file stream we want actually to read our file stream so i say read here and also let's create the html variable which would be the type of python string and here we will we'll need to loop over the lines of the file so i say for line in html file dot read and populate our html saying html plus equals line and at the very end here we actually want to print the line here i'm using print because now scrape it kind of doesn't work so it's just like a regular class class that actually invoke in method for so i can simply say print html and i hope to get the html output in my console okay it takes two arguments mm. Oh, of course, uh, I need to, I need to pass to pass the on the market, and also let's pass the em empty string just to kind of trick this this method here. Okay. So now, okay, now we got uh, this document uh, being kind of uh, sourced from from the disk instead of making HTTP request. So. From now on we can actually start making use of our selectors so we don't need actually to cop to um, globally uh, import them but probably that might be a, a, a good idea still so let me just okay so here from scrape is selector we've just imported the selector itself okay and here So the body is actually our HTML, right? So here we can simply say, okay, so this is the output, we don't need that. So selector, okay, just hold on a sec. Okay, so just in order to uh, reuse the code later on when we will be making real requests. So let's first say response equals and uh, now this part so selector copy and paste but not the body but in our case this variable is called html so this one and also now we can probably get rid of this stuff and okay let me just quickly check if this still works so like kind of no indentation errors okay great so from now on i i think i i think we can actually use uh response.css to actually let me just try this so response.css and okay let's try like i don't know body like this and okay let me just print this so uh, to make, just to make sure that selector would be extracted actually okay so we got the selector great and now uh, pl please uh, know that here actually we have 
uh, the exact syntax uh, as we will be using when dealing with the real request, so like response.css and so on. So we will delete this kind of code later on. So this this kind of code would be deleted uh, when as soon as we end up our data extraction logic. So from now on, we can actually move on with our data extraction. So the very first thing to consider actually is we need to extract uh, all the parent elements for this uh for this uh houses for these properties and then loop over them and each element so each card uh will be using to extract some specific data data like title price etc okay so let's actually try to inspect uh this sort of an element so I click inspect here okay and we see that this is the list uh and the class is well result property result panel spotlight so we probably will try to look over the uh, look for the list uh, list items uh, with the class of property result we'll just try to look over those so let's actually try to do that so here I can simply say so uh, it's actually extract extract data okay and I simply say for card so let's call the element here as just a card okay so for card in and here we say response.css and we want the list item and property results or how is that called okay property result okay property result so is this a dash or underscore Okay, it's dash, so property result here. And, well, let's actually try to print our, car, our card. Mm. And I just run the code. So, hope to see the list of selectors. So, okay, exactly, exactly as supposed here. So, these are all the cards being extracted from this kind of page. So, now let's actually move on. Uh, from the very beginning and, and further on. So the very first, let's uh, extract the title. So I just need uh, I just need to see where our title is. So let's, let's let me just quickly inspect this element. So it's a span of class title. Okay, and H reference. Okay, so first we'll probably need to find the span of the class title and then actually trying this this sort of a link. So let's try to do that basically. So first span and title. Oh sorry. And okay. So here uh, I just create uh, the items variable which would be the type of Python dictionary so I can simply say title and here we'll say and also yeah also actually want to import JSON to pretty print the, those items so I say import JSON and here I want print JSON dumps and items and indentation equals to two spaces so here response dot css we're looking for the span with the class of title and here we're looking actually for css uh, we're looking for the a tag and we want do we want the text or what do we want there actually okay yeah it's gonna text so let's try the text okay and also we need to get here so get would, would, would return the single element and this part would return a selector that can be uh, called uh, can that can just look for another elements recursively so just hold my breath and hope 
to see the list of titles now. Okay, so it seems like the titles are just fine, but hold on a sec, why all the titles are being the same? Just hold on. Okay, so of course we need to use a card here instead of the response. Yeah, so if we just used card, so we, we're, we are looping over the elements, uh, over the cards, and for each card we need to find the title, etc, etc. So here are our titles. Okay, now let's actually move on. So the next thing to consider would probably be the address. So let's have a look at the address here. So just inspect the address. So it's a span of class address, and again, so there is an A tag. Okay, so it's probably do absolutely the same here. So I just can grab this kind of stuff by saying simply, so just, oops, copy and paste. So this would be the span address. And this would be address respectively as well so let's run this one more time okay so now we have the corresponding addresses great so now let's move on then we probably need this kind of description so u page uh, so inspect element description so p class description and basically it already has all the text we need okay so here we say description card.css and we need the p tag with the uh, class of description and we want to extract text out of it and want to get the only element so I'm just using get okay description okay free house currently okay lovely two bedroom apartment okay okay yeah see, seems nice good so let's move on basically and what else to consider here so well the phone number well but first let me just basically try this uh, price here so just inspect the price so okay p cl class price text and then the h reference so h reference okay having the uh, actual price so let's try that as well so the price would be equal to card.css and one more time so p price text okay p dot price text and here we want to find the corresponding a tag and the text out there from from out there so dot get okay okay now it seems like we have our prices and also yes i would probably like to get rid of this unicode character and for that reason we need to say simply encode and provide a couple of arguments so ascii as the first and all the others we just want to ignore so we can ignore in this uh, Unicode characters and now we just want to decode this to UDF 8 back as it was before and also want to strip whatever is there so let's try this one more time okay so now we have the prices in a quite quite pretty reasonable sort of a format here so th th this is kind of nice okay now let's move on even further and so what is what actually left here so well probably let's try to uh, so what is this stuff basically let me just quickly check that so oh what have i done not the page nope just want to expect this instead okay so p class marketed by and Okay, so let's try to uh, market it by, well, probably this is agency. So let's try to, to extract that agency as well. So I just, I'm oh, sorry. I just simply say here, agency and here cart.css and the selector again. So p marketed by, okay. 
paragraph and the class marketed by and dot css and again we're just looking for a tag in, in, inside the text and get and let's see what we got here okay so it seems like the agency was great correctly as well good and now uh, actually this phone number would be also interesting i believe so let's inspect this as well so the phone number span class uh okay marketed by contact and then the strong tag the strong tag insight so or can we just uh can we just use the strong tag it's probably the only no it's not the only so this is strong as well okay so let's use the span cl class marketed by contact so phone card dot css and span dot marketed by contact okay and css and we want whatever is in within the strong tag and try to get this as well okay and yes yeah, strong tax sorry like this okay so now it seems like we have our phone has been scraped as well okay so the very last thing to consider is actually let's let's take kind of one of the urls so let's see what uh, this one in particular so where is this so it's a picture picture image image and source so what what's the picture actually okay let's actually try to extract that as well so just just to make it clear okay so let's call this image url and we simply say card.css we're looking for the picture tag it's to be honest uh, i i can see this picture tag at the very first <laughs> time in my life okay and then css then we're looking for the image but we want the attribute uh attribute source instead of we don't need the text of course we just need the attribute source and get so let's try to see what is there as well okay so now let's try to grab one one of the pictures so just trying to make sure that it's exactly what we we're looking for okay this is good well because uh it might be a little bit different from what we see here well that's just because uh, uh this sort of request uses cookies while this one doesn't so uh, it kind of there is kind of a little bit different list so that's the reason why the picture might be different so it's not a big deal basically the the most important thing that we actually are able to scrape uh, the image urls as well okay guys so from now on it seems like the basic data extraction logic uh, is already kind of done so uh, the very last thing to consider basically here is actually to crawl uh, over some sort of a pages so we just navigate down and try to click for a page too you see like this uh, address browser url has, has been changed slightly a bit so we need to append uh a sp we need to specify the page here so let's actually try and to to do that basically so uh, okay we don't probably ever need uh this sort of a debugging stuff anymore so i can simply just get rid of all this stuff i can uncommand my crawler process as well but before okay so we don't also need uh, to reference uh we don't also need to reference our file and now the nice thing re regarding this stuff that the response object would be used instead of that sort of response that was assigned to the value of the selector so we'll be using absolutely the same code we've just written, written here and here in the start requests uh we need to implement some sort of logic of 
hope you laid in uh, the URLs we're supposed to crowd. So let me first just comment out this request. And now we can sim simply say for page in range from, uh, well, from probably from zero is enough. So let me just, let me just try if the page is zero here, if it is page zero. Okay, so it's still, it still kind of gives you something here. So we can use from zero to whatever number of pages we want to crawl. So from zero, well, let, let's crawl, just say four, or wait, uh, from zero to four, it would be three pages. So let's just crawl three pages as a proof of concept. Of course, you can uh, specify this number to whatever, like say 40 or how many there, just let me see, like, uh, okay. You can set to 42 or whatever, if you really need to extract all of the pages there. So. Uh, I'll just uh, scrape the first three pages and here uh, I will say that the next page would be equal URL plus and here uh, we specify the string query parameters so page equals and plus stringify whatever the page value is there. So before actually making the request, let's first try to print uh, our page. Uh, or actually, we can, well, let's just print this. Okay, so just print, no, no, not the page, but the next URL, okay. And let's run the code. Okay, it gives some error because, okay, not the next URL, next page. It, w it will give some errors because we're not do doing any re request, but that's still kind of just just fine so what we need here to see is our uh, url so we would be following this this one then this one this and this one respectively and well let's actually try uh, let's actually try doing that and also in order to actually uh, store the response uh, store our data to CSV uh, we need to, uh, to provide some some sort of a custom settings here so I say custom custom settings uh, equals so this would be a type of Python dictionary and this is scrapey uh, specific stuff again so uh, I just say feed format and specify the CSV and also here uh, feed URI and this would be called on the market dot CSV like this okay mm, and probably one last thing okay so now we actually want to yield uh, the request every time the next page is actually being updated so here url equals the next page okay and also in order to actually being able to store uh, all this stuff to the csv file instead of uh, creating well actually we can leave this as well but here uh, let's actually do the following stuff so here we, we need to see yield and items of course, yeah, and items like this. So you you can just simply say 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 like yield like this, and this would also work. But let me just uh, keep things like this way, just so we are still able to bring that some debugging information or lock it to this to the scrapey spider as well. So okay, now I hold my breath and actually I'm just wondering what would be the better way. So. If I just run this in the main thread, it might be blocked. So probably I would need to run this in background, but well, let me just try to run this in the main main thread. So just, uh, okay, so it seems like, well, as far as uh, they, they were asynchronous requests, it's just pretty enough power to process this stuff. Let me just quickly see what we got here. Okay, so it's like be crawling, 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 crawling. Okay, so let's actually have a look at so first let's see how we call that actually so okay i can't see this on the market why okay so looking for on the market 
Hold on, guys. Oh, okay, I just I just noticed a little bug here. So not custom setting, but custom settings, of course. So well, that's probably the reason why I didn't output any CSV. So let me just run this one more time. Okay. So. Hmm, this is a bit strange. This time it goes a little bit, a little bit long. Uh, takes more time. Not sure why exactly that happens, basically, but. Mm. Okay. Okay. Even though it did output some some part of the CSV file, let me just better run this sort of stuff in the background, just in order to make sure it will it would run uh, correctly. So just cut this date and paste, and here I just run in the background, and well. I'm not really logging anything, so no, no way actually to see. Well, actually, I could have provided some sort of. Okay, guys, so let me just better show you how to lock things here easily. So, okay, so let me just quickly. As far as it probably already did succeed, but let me just specify here the lock file, and let's call this. Well, I don't know. Well, let's call this. On the market.log and now it should have output all the stuff to the log file so just uh, run this in background again and here let's actually list what we got here so okay so here is our log file being generated dynamically so let's have a look at that so I can simply say cat on the market dot log and run okay okay so the spider is finished great so that's that means that csv has been uploaded already so and here we can see actually what was done here so just scraped scraped so everything seems to be just fine here so okay now let's actually try our uh, on the market dot csv instead and just run this again Okay, so it seems like our CSV is being presented here. So if I just try to grab all and then just go into my local environment and just create a new document on the market dot CSV and oh my god, not in LibreOffice immediately. Sorry guys, just it's not what I wanted to do basically. I just wanted to open this with a text editor instead. So text editor, just paste this stuff, just save it, and now try to open this with the LibreOffice. Okay. Okay. My mouse is going crazy for some reason. Maybe better using the touchpad instead. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Okay, so here is the title and yeah also we have address description okay seems like it's just kind of fine okay the phone numbers the image urls agencies prices well the very important stuff is the prices basically so we have our prices and let's just go in a little bit down so here is the data from the next pages apparently okay so it's going down the round here okay 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 so he just adds a title address description uh, each new request each new page basically this this might have been uh, removed by the way it's not really that difficult just uh, need to create a custom uh, CSV exporter for that sort of a purpose but that involves already creating a uh, a full-blown scrapey project with with all those with those settings files etc but which is not the topic of this video definitely so you see guys that we've been we've scraped data from kind of all the three or four yeah probably three pages so this is kind of it and the data seems pretty reasonable and that's actually exactly what we needed so I really hope that you've jo you have enjoyed this sort of a tutorial and learned something interesting out of it. So this is it from my side. So until next time and see you in the next tutorial. So take care guys.